Hey everybody, welcome back to our Origin Summer Preview 2015 coverage. I am sitting here with Jim Long from Ares Games. And we're taking a look at a very, very cool artwork here, very interesting game. What is this, Jim? This is Jolly Roger. This is a new game coming out in just about the next two weeks. Wow. It is a game of piracy and mutiny. Uh, it's a big part of what's Sounds going on. Uh, so the, the object of the game is, one, it's not a collectible game. So this is the entire product right. in, in a, a prototype set. So each player takes a certain, uh, will have a, a hand of cards. And, and here in the red back here are crew cards. Okay. You use your crew for a couple of different things. At the start of the game, you pick a captain. The captain picks a quartermaster. Those two people make a lot of decisions in terms of what's going on. Okay. So, so let's say you and I are playing, and we've got a Casey, and she's joined us, and she's playing as well. I'm the captain. You're the quartermaster. She's crew. And you can play many people, so um, you can have a lot of folks be part of your crew. Every turn, the captain decides where you're going to sail. Okay. okay. So you can sail to Tortuga to add crew. You can plunder a merchant ship. You can go to attack a fortress, you can attack uh, a town. And each location that you have, once you get done with the location, will have a certain amount of treasure. So right. as you can imagine, a fortress is typically going to have more treasure than a merchantman in a town in the center. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can see it goes all from five all the way up to 13. Wow. And yeah. that's just the number of cards you're going to draw if you succeed in getting the, um, the treasure. Okay. You succeed in, in defeating the fort, capturing the merchantman, capturing the town. Okay. Typical crew cards have two components. They have a number of crewmen and they represent a skill. Okay? Right. So you'll notice on like this fortress right here, if the captain says we're going to attack a fort, mm -hmm. and assuming everybody, oh, his crew is fine with that because the captain has to stay you know, within the goodwill of the crew, you wouldn't know what you're attacking. You just say we're attacking a fort. And the back of the cards will have the fortress card on it. I see. Players at their own discretion can play a certain number of cards in their hands to say, uh, to, to equal navigation, cannons, or combat, or wild. And these okay. are being played around Out of the your table, hand. face up? Uh, fa uh, face up, but in, in any order you want. So if someone says, look, I'm going to put two cannons and I'm done. So it's a big discussion. It's a big discussion, okay, right. I see. No one is ever required to do it. You know, in terms of putting their cards out on, onto the table. So if you don't want to contribute to capturing the fortress, you don't have to contribute. Okay. Once everybody has said, I'm done, I've contributed everything, and let's just say we've contributed these, okay? We turn over the card to figure out, well, what did we have to get? We had to get two navigation. Well, we got two, or had to get one. We got that. We needed three cannons. Well, there's one. I can use these wild cards for two more. I'm short three the fortress holds out against us, we don't get it. Got it. Okay? So, discard that, and then we go to the next phase. So, so it's really a simple mechanic. The, the tension comes with the captain makes three decisions. One, who the quartermaster is. Two, where they're going to sail. And at the end, the captain can assign punishment. He can say, you did not contribute. I don't like the way you, you handled that. And, he, and that forces you to lose cards. I see. So at any point when the captain says, I'm going to release you punishment, any crew member, including the quartermaster, can say, mutiny. Now, mutiny can happen once each turn. So every three decisions that, that the captain makes makes one turn. Okay. Who the quartermaster is, where you're going to sail, and then punishment, and then start a new turn. So if someone mutinies, then we don't care about the different, we don't care what's down here on the skills. We only care how many crewmen we have. Got it. So now my cards have a different purpose. So now I can go, well, this is only worth one navigation, but it's worth two crewmen in a fight if, to see who controls the ship. Mm -hmm. The interesting part is, is if you do succeed, okay, the quartermaster divides up the spoil. So over the course of the game, folks will gather treasure cards. And treasure cards are, are money. There's hostages that you can get. There's bags of gems. There we go. So there's jewels. jewels. And rum. Rum. Eh? Okay. That's Rum's that's good. Bad. And then there's actually a hostage in there as well as the okay. other kind of card. We got some gold okay. as well, right? Yep. And, All right. And so the quartermaster di divides the treasure. So it, let's pretend that we had been successful, for example, capturing this fort. We'd draw the top five cards. Mm -hmm. As the captain, I would get first pick, and so I say, well, I'll take the jewels, because that's really valuable. 
Uh, do you have to show what you took? Yes, face okay. this, okay. And then I give the rest to the quartermaster right. who divides the cards as cards, not the value, as equally as he can. Uh, so if, if there's two other people in the crew, yourself and one other person, right, you can so go, can right. And you can, you can really put them on the short end of the stick, but at some point they may go, I'm not getting any treasure with this captain because he always takes the best stuff. So as a captain, I may say, I'll take the rum, which is the least valuable in terms of victory points. Uh, but good in, in the game itself. That way it lets you keep making the choice. Exactly, right. because if someone says mutiny, then everybody takes their hand of card, pauses what we're doing, and we use our crewmen to determine who controls the ship. Sounds good. It sounds like it has a very interesting flow to it. It, it very, um, very surprising because there's a lot of tension in the game in terms of how you actually use your cards. At some point, you'll run out of cards, so you have to go to Tortuga to get more crew. Uh -huh. Okay, um, and so you, you draw more cards. Other times, everyone will go. I want to go to Tortuga. I'm out of cards, and the captain's saying, mm, No, I think we're going to go bury treasure. Bury treasure is how you lock in your cards. Uh, okay. okay. So well, how long does the game run, Jim? Uh, Twenty minutes, maybe. Really? Yeah. That's 20, 30 at the max, and, and a, a big table. You can play a lot of folks at this. So I mean, if you've got, a, if you're doing a lot of mutinies every turn, it can last a little bit longer. But basically, really short, really fast, and you're off and running. And what's the game called again? Jolly Roger. Jolly Roger. In about two weeks, we can get it. About two weeks, it should okay. hit our shores. From Aries Games. Excellent. Thank you, sir, for joining us, and thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.